The ultimate sacrifice. Hallelujah. The ultimate sacrifice. Now, when we say that, we, we automatically think of Messiah, and rightly so. He was our ultimate sacrifice. He paid, He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. True. Nor, Amen. nor anyone else could do for us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. But let's look at another ultimate sacrifice in Scripture. You know, there's a Old Testament here that shows the same principle, the ultimate sacrifice, an ultimate sacrifice. And of course, if you think about it, that is Isaac. The man Isaac. Like I said, it's a very popular uh, conversation and teaching. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, if we look at it, most people believe that Isaac in the scripture, and around the time he was uh, to be sacrificed or uh, was brought up to Mount Moriah, which we'll get into in a moment, he was between the years of age of 20 to 25 years old. Wow. Now that's interesting. Wow. That's, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, that's young. My son is my son is older than that. But can you imagine a 20 to 25 year old somewhere around there? Not sure exactly because we don't know the exact his act, act, exact age and stuff. But somewhere around 20 to 25, his father brought him up to Mount Moriah to be sacrificed. Now in Genesis chapter two, I mean um, Genesis chapter twenty-two. I'm looking down at my paper and I said two because. I'm going to go to verse 2. Of course, we can read the whole thing, starting in verse 1. Genesis chapter 22, starting in verse 1. We'll, we're going to skip around in here a little bit. Genesis chapter 22. Okay, now we notice right off in verse 20, uh, verse 21, <laughs> verse 21, verse 1, <laughs> told you I wasn't awake yet, it, it says, it came to pass after these things that Elohim did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, he said, behold, here am I, here I am. Now notice right away, he did tempt, now what does that word tempt? We, we in the, our English would say tempt like tempting somebody to do something. But in the scripture, the word tempt, the word tempt, tempt, is to also to test. It must have just... Yeah, the primitive root of that, the primitive Hebrew root of that word, which is Hebrew 52-54, a primitive root to test. By implication to a tent. So we, we think he's, he's, he's tempting him here, but the actual word is test. And we can see that throughout the rest of the scriptures that we're going to be reading. Okay? Verse 2. Let me switch my version over here. Okay, verse 2. It said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee. Now, originally, Yahweh does not tell Abraham where they're going. He just told them that to go into the land of Moriah, to one of the mountains, giving the indication that there's more than one mountain there to go to. Abraham did not know where he was going. Abraham did not, uh, Yahweh did not tell him where he was going. Okay. We only see later on, they tell him it's Mount Moriah. Or, or what mount it is. Okay, we see in verse 4, we uh, read verse 3 first. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two 
of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place which Yahweh had told him. Amen. You notice here, you notice in other places in Scripture that when Yahweh asks somebody to do something, they do Yahweh, are you sure? We don't get no indication of that here. Abraham, Yahweh spoke to Abraham directly. Go into the land of Moriah and offer thy son for burnt offering. We don't get no indication. Of course, it, the scriptures are not fully clear here. Uh, they're not. We don't get the whole picture of what's going on. But there's no indication here that Abraham questioned Yahweh about A, leaving and going to the land of Moriah, where he was going, and B, having to sacrifice his son. He just did it. You see, sometimes that's a problem with believers. Not just anyone here, I'm not thinking of anyone in here, just anyone in general. We question Yahweh. Yahweh tells us to go somewhere. And we say, are you sure? My wife and I, where would we be if Yahweh hadn't called Pastor and Sister Fidel to Philadelphia? You see, they were called to Philadelphia. They didn't know what they were doing, where they were going. They might not have. No. All they knew that there was a calling from Yahweh separately, both of them. They both got separate callings from Yahweh to go to Philadelphia. But the thing was, they did it. Thank you, Yahweh. And today I'm saved, and my wife is saved, and Brother Cleve is saved, and others are saved because of that. Thank you, Father. It's the same thing. Abraham did not question Yahweh. You see, we question Yahweh too much. Sometimes we can question Yahweh too much. True. Yahweh, are you sure I want to, you want me to do this? Who are we to question Yahweh what he wants us to do? True. If Yahweh wants us to do something, he must have a reason for doing it. That's true. And if it looks like an impossible task, we have to believe in faith that Yahweh's going to do what he needs to do for us to accomplish that task. That's for sure. We have to know by faith that Yahweh is going to do what he needs to do. He's going to lead us and guide us yes. and give us the strength to, to do what we need to do. Verse 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. You notice it took three day, a three-day journey uh -huh. to this place, yeah. Mount, Mount of Moriah, which means Yahweh sees. Mount Moriah was a very significant location. Back when it was desolate, just tree-filled mountains. But if you Huge short generations later, it would become the fo focal point of Yahweh's anointed. Amen. You Amen. see, what it was it about this place, Mount Moriah? It was where Jerusalem would be. Wow. It was where Jerusalem would come to be. Amen. It's where the temple would come to be. Amen. It's where Messiah would be crucified. Wow. You see, all the significance of this place? Yeah. You see, and what happened would happen if Abraham didn't be obedient? Uh-huh. All that would have been changed. So true, so true. You know, if, if we were able, of course I know physically and, you know, everything, we can't do it, but if we were to go back to a, a period back in our life, like back to a certain day and change something, things today wouldn't be the same because of that change. So true. Okay, but in the scripture, of course, we know we can't do that, 
But what would ha have happened if Abraham wasn't obedient? Mm. Would just have the king, the mount, mountain where the uh, temple would have been built, where Israel would have, or Jerusalem would have been, and where Messiah would have been crucified. Let's read the next verse. And Abraham said unto his young men, look at this, and abide here with the asses, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Now, if the servants that accompanied Abraham and his son to the sacrificial site, they might have wanted to restrain him, saying, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? But notice they didn't. He told them to stay with the donkeys. He and his son were going up to worship and said, we will come back. We will come again to you, it says in the KJV. This Hebrew text right here, the Hebrew text for these three words were more striking in the Hebrew translation. The three verbs shown here all show a strong de uh, determination on the part of Abraham. Amen. We're determined, we are determined to go. We are determined to worship. We are determined to return. Look at the faith there. Look at the faith. He don't say, notice he don't say, we, he don't say, I and the lad will go yonder worshiping, and I will come unto you, again to you. He said, and we will come again to you. And come again to you, saying, both of them will. He knows by faith that Yahweh, he's going to go up and do the sacrifice and come back down, and they're both going to come back down. Yes. Abraham knew that Yahweh had called him to do what the weird, what the weird thing, what was the weird thing about him saying this? He was either lying to his servants when he said this in verse 5, he was either delusional and speaking not rationally, unrationally, or he truly believed that he and the boy would return. Yes. Of course, we knew it was three. He knew him and the boy would return. Remember, he had heard many times before this that Yahweh had made the promise to create a nation through Isaac. So, how did Abraham not trust Yahweh? How did Abraham not trust Yahweh that he was going to raise him up again if Amen. he had, did have to kill him? That's faith. Because he, Abraham knew the promise of the, a nation would be in the seed of Isaac. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't get no indication of Abraham questioning anything about this. There's no indication at all like that. He believed he, those promises. He had concluded that even if he had to kill his son, that Yahweh would bring him back to life to fulfill the promise. He had the faith that if, even if he had to kill Isaac, the Yahweh would raise him again from the yes. dead. That's what it says. Hallelujah. Let's take, quickly jump over to Hebrews chapter 11. Hallelujah. This is good, Charles. Good. Verse 18. 
Yeah, that's what I was looking for. I didn't think my paper here has seven through nineteen. Yeah, seventeen through nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not seven. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's what my paper says. I must have accidentally deleted the one of seventeen through nineteen. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Yas Isaac. Remember, the word tried there is 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 tested, not it's like the word tempted. It's tested, not tried. Like like right. what we would think in our English. Right, right, right. Okay. That he had received the promises, offered up his own begotten son, of whom he said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that Elohim was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Hallelujah. He knew by faith that that Yahweh was going to raise him from the dead if he had to kill him. Right. Now, let's jump back to Genesis 22. I should have told you to keep your a bookmarker or something there in Genesis 22. Verse 9. And it came to pass, and they came to the place where Elohim had told, told him of. And Abraham built there an, al an altar there. And laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. So we see the binding of Isaac here. At this point, Isaac would get plant a pretty clear picture about what was going on. Let's paint this picture again. Here's Abraham. Abraham is about 125 years old, somewhere around there. By about a hundred years older than his son, they're about. Isaac was about 25. How hard do you think it would have been for Isaac to not allow his father to bind him by ropes and put him on the altar? I mean, look at that. I mean, think about that. A Abraham is 20, 100, about 125 years old. And his son Isaac is only 25 years old. I, I can imagine a big, strong, strappy young man. Uh -huh. how, how hard would it be for Isaac to stop his father from binding him up and laying him on the altar? Right. He wouldn't right. have had no problem. But he was willing to obey his father. Hallelujah. Even if that meant being led to the death. Does that sound familiar? Sure. Messiah was obedient to his father, the father. Hallelujah. And went to the cross and died for our sins. Yes. He could have been, he could have called a thousand angels and set them free. But he said in the scriptures of Matthew, I think it's 17 something. Or later on, 27, later on, I'm not sure where. It says, not my will be done, but yeah. thy will. He yeah. says in, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Hallelujah. He says, he says, let this cup pass from me. Yeah. But if, if not, not my will be done, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. That's good, good. The ultimate sacrifice. Yes. We're looking at a two-tier picture of the, the the ultimate sacrifice. Where we're looking at Isaac. Let's drop down. Let's jump down a little bit. We'll jump down to the last verse. 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went to, and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Let's jump back a little bit here in the story, okay? Because 
I'm, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, but Isaac, if uh, verse later, two verses late earlier, let's see, in verse uh, yeah, okay, verse seven. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I my son, and he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? You see, he sees the fire, he sees the wood, but he don't see a burnt offering. Isaac must not have understood what was might not have been going on. Because he knew, obviously, from scripture, he knew if there's a fire, there's the, the wood, there's an offering. Because Abraham is the, that's the way Abraham brought him up. So Abraham, uh, Isaac is saying, where is the, the sacrifice? And Abraham, in verse uh, 14, says, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Yahweh Yara, as it is said this day, in the mount, it shall be, it shall be seen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Yahweh. Verse 15, the angel calls out to Abraham not to sacrifice his son. So we see, we see here an ultimate sacrifice. And Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son. Hallelujah. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son. Yes. An ultimate sacrifice. His only son, it says. It doesn't say just his son. It's, at this point, he has eight sons, I believe. Yeah. Uh, eventually, he has eight sons. That we're, we're told about. But at this time, Isaac is as his only son. Interesting. He's willing to... Give up his only son. You see, this story is just not a story in the scriptures. This story is for us. Hallelujah. Whenever Yahweh gives us a command, whether it be from the scriptures or the Holy Spirit impressing us to do something, we sometimes question it or sometimes we might want to do it and we get pressure from the world why are you doing that why we you know somebody might say to you why are you going to philadelphia you know why philadelphia that's a, that's a big city you know drugs alcohol all that <laughs> but yahweh came to the sinners messiah came to eat with the publicans and the sinners. How, who are we to deny somebody access to Yahweh? That's Hallelujah. True. That's good. That's good. Who are we to not witness to somebody because they to, to, and look at them and say, well, they can't be saved. They're beyond being saved. Who are we to say that? That's true. Who are we to judge? Who is and isn't to be saved. We don't know what might happen. I'm sure Pastor and Sister Bedell, when they moved, moved to Philadelphia, they didn't foresee having a big church up there. A big assembly. And all the people that would be saved. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. To the glory of Yahweh. And... All the men that ended up becoming pastors. And all the global. You see, it goes global also. Thank you, Allah. That, you know, it's, it's a global ministry. You see, Yahweh doesn't always give us the full picture. He didn't give Abraham the full picture in the beginning. Hallelujah. But he fulfilled in the filled it in as he went along. Uh, 
Okay. You see, what things in our life would be hardest for us to give up? Do we have something in our life that we need to give up? It'd be hard. You know, Abraham was willing to give it up. Why did Abraham ask to, to sacrifice his son? Hallelujah. Why did Abraham obey? How does this story illustrate the sacrifice made by Yahweh, Yahweh Messiah? Yes. You see the parallels here in these scriptures as compared to Messiah. When we were in school, when we were in that, when we were younger, and we were in sports, did our coaches require us to do more, do something that we didn't think we could do, and we did it, and we we're glad we did? You know, when we're raised up, our parents tell us that we need to do something, that we need to whatever it is, get a job or whatever it is, and it's for our good. We don't always see what it is. We don't always see the ultimate goal. Amen. You see, there's always, always, catch this, always, blessings and obedience to Hallelujah. Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yes, Always. Yes, sir. We might not understand it all. We might not understand anything of it. Like Abraham. But there's always blessings in obedience. And there's there's curses in disobedience. Amen. Time and time again, the scriptures talk about uh, good, the obedience and disobedience. Blessing and cursings. Hallelujah. Again and again. You see, there's blessings in obedience to Yahweh. We might not always understand it, but there is blessings. Hallelujah. Abraham was blessed in obedience. Hallelujah. Even though he didn't have to kill his son. He was still obedient to Yahweh. Hallelujah. And he brought him up to Mount Moriah. Yeah. Yahweh sees. Hallelujah. The ultimate sacrifice. Let us think about that ultimate sacrifice. Ultimate obedience. Ultimate obedience leads to blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all are blessed. Praise Y'all. Hello, Channel. Thanks you for watching this video. We hope you were edified by this content. Reach out to us with the information provided on screen, or you may click on the links to view more of our videos. Please subscribe to be notified of new uploads. Until next time, Shalom.